Queen Elizabeth I is somewhat of a legendary figure. She has been portrayed in numerous films, TV shows, and documentaries. Known for her stoic demeanor and much speculated love life, Elizabeth I remains an enigmatic figure even today. But how much do you actually know about the self-proclaimed Virgin Queen? In this video, we will count down 5 things you probably didn't know about Queen Elizabeth I. Number 5. She was obsessed with how she looked. As a young woman, Elizabeth was said to be very attractive. She was tall and slim, with a shock of red hair and alabaster skin. Throughout her 20s, she was described as very handsome, and tall and well-formed with a good skin, and above all, a beautiful hand with which she makes displays. She clearly enjoyed her good looks and would destroy any portrait of her that she disliked. Robert Cecil, her Secretary of State, once claimed that Elizabeth forbade the painting of any image until a clever painter has finished one which all other painters can copy. He also stated that she forbids the showing of any portraits which are ugly. Essentially, she was the original Instagram model. Elizabeth was a trendsetter, and women went to great lengths to get the look. They tried bleaching or dyeing their hair to achieve her signature red locks and, failing that, wore wigs. As the nobility did not have to labor in the sun, pale skin was all the rage. A foundation called ceruse, made of white lead and vinegar, was popular for achieving an alabaster complexion. But it was highly toxic. It affected the skin in such a way that women started glazing their skin with raw egg white to smooth its appearance. Fake veins were painted on to give the impression of transparency. The eyebrows and hairlines were plucked, and belladonna juice was used as eye-brightening drops. When Elizabeth was 29, she was struck down with smallpox. Although she nearly died, she was much more concerned with the pockmarks that now covered her face. To maintain her youthful appearance, she employed many techniques that other noble women used to emulate her. Elizabeth's clothes were also the height of fashion, and her wardrobe was extensive and highly valuable. As Elizabeth got older, she became more desperate to keep her youthful appearance. She felt that if she were to look old, she would no longer be taken seriously as queen. Moreover, as she had always stated that her reign was about consistency, she wanted her looks to reflect this doctrine. Number 4. She was in agony in the months leading up to her death. While obsessed with what she looked like on the outside, Queen Elizabeth hid a lot of physical pain in the months leading up to her death. She was 69 and had reigned as queen for 45 years, but her death was as mysterious and shrouded as her personal life. It is well documented that she was in emotional agony in her last weeks of life. She had lost several close friends and expressed regret at the fate of her cousin Mary. She seemed to know death was near and insisted on remaining standing for fear that, should she rest, she would not get back up again. Her maids placed pillows around her, onto which she eventually collapsed. In addition to her poor mental health, she was not in a good physical state. Her mouth was a mass of abscesses and pus-filled glands, and her hair was all but gone due to lead poisoning from her years of applying thick layers of ceruse makeup. The infection in her mouth and jaw was so bad that swallowing and talking would have been next to impossible, and she lost the power of speech just before she passed. In addition, the coronation ring that she had kept on her for her entire reign had cut into her skin and her flesh had begun to grow around it. It worried her doctors so much that they insisted the ring be surgically removed, leading some to speculate whether this procedure led to blood poisoning that caused her death. The Queen's Lady of the Bedchamber would not allow doctors at the time to perform a post-mortem examination. However, modern experts have studied all of her recorded symptoms to try and better understand the cause of her death. They theorized that, as her left hand had swelled and she was thin and emaciated, her heart was probably failing. They also suggest she had a fluid buildup in her lungs from an internal infection. Forensic pathologist Dr. Brett Lockyer postulates that the queen died from bronchial pneumonia and that it was the infection in her lungs that gave her blood poisoning. Number 3. She had a sweet tooth and it showed. Queen Elizabeth I was massively fond of sweets. She loved syllabubs, a dessert made of sweetened wine or cider blended with milk and sugar and whipped into a foam. She ate marzipan, sweet cakes, and other sugar-laden desserts, but was particularly fond of candied violets. While we all love a good sugary treat, toothbrushing in the Elizabethan age is not what it is now. Elizabethans used quills, twigs, or cloths to remove bits of food from their teeth. 
but scrubbing them was not a common habit. Suffice it to say, it wasn't long before Elizabeth's teeth began to fall out. First, they turned yellow, which must have stood out quite prominently against her white face makeup, and then eventually turned black. However, this did not damage her image as a trendsetter, and soon noble women were blackening their own teeth as a fashion statement. Her lack of care for oral hygiene contributed to the hideous state of her mouth when she died, adding to the damage from years of lead poisoning. Number 2. She was suspected of murder On the face of it, this one might not come as a surprise. After all, Queen Elizabeth I sent plenty of people to the executioner, including her own cousin, Mary. But it was another, more inconspicuous death that got tongues wagging. The Queen's love life was much speculated about, and there is no doubt that she enjoyed the company of dashing young men. She made no secret of it when she favored a particular man and lavished her attention on them. One such man was Robert Dudley. Dudley was around the same age as Elizabeth and was the son of a noble family. Elizabeth and Dudley met as children and studied together in the royal classroom. They soon became close friends, matched in age and intellect. Dudley later stated that he knew her better than anyone else from when she was eight years old, and from that age, she always said she would never marry. As a teenager, Dudley married Amy Robsart. This union was supposedly a love match, and as Dudley was the fifth in line for his father's titles, a marriage to an heiress like Amy was certainly advantageous to the ambitious Dudley. Elizabeth was not in line for the throne at the time of his marriage, and her younger brother Edward was king. The young king and his sister Elizabeth both attended the wedding. Dudley and Elizabeth were thrown together again in 1554 when they both found themselves inmates of the Tower of London. Dudley was there due to his father's involvement in the bid to put Lady Jane Grey on the throne, and Elizabeth was imprisoned by her half-sister Mary I through a fear of her crown being usurped by her Protestant rivals. Many speculate that the old school friends spent much of their time together during their imprisonment, although this is mere speculation. When Elizabeth succeeded Mary I, she immediately sent for Dudley and made him master of the horse the same day that she ascended to the throne. This position meant that Dudley was to be at court, by the new queen's side, for the majority of the time. Dudley's wife Amy did not come with her husband, but stayed at their home in Berkshire. Rumors swirled around the queen and her favorite consort, including that Amy was ill from a malady in the breast and Elizabeth was waiting for her to die so she and Dudley could wed. Two years after Dudley gained his position in court, his wife did die, but not from an illness. On the morning of September 8, 1560, Amy allowed her servants to leave her home of Cumnor Palace to attend a fair in Abingdon. Her ladies-in-waiting stayed at the house, but when they came to attend her, they found her lying at the bottom of her staircase, her head twisted in an awkward angle, and it was clear that her neck was broken. The coroner who examined the body declared she had two head wounds in addition to her obvious injury one measuring two inches deep. He also noted that she had no other marks on her body. Still, the coroner declared that she died through misfortune and nothing else. But even people at the time did not buy the explanation that she had merely fallen. Many suspected that the queen had done away with her rival so she could have Dudley to herself. However, the scandal ensured that the two could never wed, as it was sure to confirm the suspicions that Amy had met a foul end so her husband could be king. Elizabeth and Dudley remained close for the rest of Dudley's life. Despite his many attempts to woo Elizabeth, she never accepted his proposals, keeping him as a brother and best friend. Number 1. Her own father declared she was illegitimate Elizabeth's relationship with her parents was complicated, to say the least. She disappointed her father from the day she was born, simply because she was not the son he had hoped for. Her mother, Anne Boleyn, had become Henry's wife through a love match, or maybe a lust match is more accurate. But after giving birth to a stillborn boy in 1536, she was imprisoned in the Tower of London by her husband. Elizabeth was not yet three when her mother suffered through a stillbirth, was imprisoned, and subsequently executed at the hands of her father. It's no wonder she was a commitment phobe with daddy issues. Adding insult to injury, Henry posthumously annulled his marriage to Anne, rendering Elizabeth illegitimate and thus having no claim to the throne. Elizabeth then watched as her father went through four more women in his desperation to produce a male heir. Despite this, Elizabeth did not seem to harbor any resentment towards her father. In fact, she modeled herself after him. 
Writing to him in 1546, she stated she was not only an imitator of his virtues, but an inheritor of them. And true to her word, she indeed did inherit his virtues in the shape of his crown, despite Henry's best efforts to stop it. Was there anything on our list that surprised you? Let us know in the comments below. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about Queen Elizabeth I, check out our book, Elizabeth I, A Captivating Guide to the Queen of England, who was the last of the five monarchs of the House of Tudor. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.